Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. And today to celebrate the 85th anniversary of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, we're going to be taking a look at her limited edition doll from the Disney Store. Hello, I'm Jamie and I like to make toy videos here on my channel. Reviews, restyles, reactions, and more. So I hope you'll consider subscribing for more videos like this. Alright, here it is. So I got the general version from the Disney Store. And for the box design, I really appreciate the reflective foil surface that they have all over the box. And I also really like the white flowers and the ornate borders. The logo in the middle of the box is also written in foil. The choice of font here is quite interesting because I only see it as Gnow White. She is limited edition of 7,700. The top window also has the logo, but not in foil. And I appreciate the foil patterns going all around the box, even on the back. And as a copywriter myself, I always appreciate a nice copy on the back of the doll's boxes. And opening the doors, I really love that burst of gold hidden underneath the silver inside. And I really love the way it says Snow White on the bottom, it's very much like the movie. And her anniversary emblem sticker is an apple shaped one. And we got our silver certificate on the side and mine is number 6974. I got my doll from Shop Disney Singapore so international stores tend to get the later numbers in the series. Alright, now let's try to get her out. So with these new type of boxes, I find it very difficult to lift the front cover. So I tend to just turn them over and just pat them down until she falls out of the box, basically. And then I would just lift her up. And here we have Snow White still attached to her cardboard backing. And here is the biggest sin of this box. I'm not even going to get into the drama of the boxes because I'm sure you guys are sick of it. But the biggest sin that I have to point out is that the doll herself not having the plastic window on the top. Which is the number one problem of making it very difficult to display her without the front cover with the doors. Now, like always, let's take one final look in her original box posing before we take her out forever. So while we debox, I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Do you have both the D23 version and the general version? Or have you already got the D23 version and that is enough for you so you would skip general? And vice versa, have you gotten your general version but still on the hunt for D23? For me, particularly for Snow White, I want both. So I'm still on the hunt for D23, mostly because of Dopey. Like, I don't even care much about the crown or the extra train, but I just love Dopey so much ever since I was a kid. I used to act like I was Dopey when I was young with my mom. Like, before I go off to school in the morning, I would make my mom take my ears and kiss me on the head like Snow White would. So it's a really cute memory for me. I kind of struggled a little bit with the tags on her head because they were so close to her hair so I didn't want to risk it with a knife so I kind of just used my thumb to push it out of her head. And boy, that hurt. Like always, I also want to appreciate the background and the background for this doll particularly is very beautiful. It's clear, it's sharp, it's not pixelated and it's gorgeous watercolor art and might even be the original background art from the movie but it's a lovely picture of the wishing well and some doves and this part is funny because i was actually trying to get an idea of how to pose her for the photo shoot later but i didn't realize that i had actually left the camera running for like 15 minutes straight and here is Snow, so let's take a 360 overview of her before we get into the details. So she is really beautiful. I, I, I'm in love with her already. The dress is light and flowy and it flares out nicely. But one thing I also notice is that the way the fabric is cut is like it's longer in the front and it's actually shorter in the back. It also has more fabric in the front so that it creates those folds and pleats, whereas the back is pretty much just straight. I think it was made in this way to accommodate the extra train on the D23 version, but without the train on the general version, it just looks a little bit weird. Right, now let's get into the details starting with her hair and face. So this is only actually my third uh, limited edition Snow White doll after the 2009 original one and the Shanghai edition, and I think throughout the years they haven't updated Snow Sculpt at all, and I don't think it's needed because it's really just perfect for her. 
She got her straight looking brown eyes, some silvery eyeshadow going on on her sculpted lid, along with her rooted lashes, really red lips, and surprisingly she's showing her teeth here. I think usually they paint over that little teeth gap to make her closed mouth, so this is cute. For her hair, she has her iconic center part, but she also has a braid going through on the top, and the rest of her hair is just short curly hair that is extremely, extremely gelled to keep it in shape. And she also got her dangly earrings, which are metal, so they're attached to a gold stud and has a red gem in the middle. Dangly earrings being actually dangly on dolls is the best feeling ever for me. <laughs> For her veil, it's attached with some fabric white flowers and a fabric red rose on either side of her head. And they're on this little black felt piece, I think, to blend in with the hair. I thought the veil might be easily removable, but it looks like it's actually sewn into her head. Speaking of veils, it's actually made out of this really soft, lush material. I don't know what it is, but I love it so much. It's really soft, it's really smooth, and it has that kind of flowy weight that I look for in doll fabrics. The veil actually has two layers of fabric, so I wish they weren't sewn together at the end so that we have two individual fabrics where we can pull one to the front to cover her face with. Now let's move on to her outfit. So for her bodice, she has a deep V neckline that is trimmed with this little gold trim that actually goes all the way to the back. And I also really like that deep, deep cut, <laughs> deep back uh, on the back too. And I really love that her bodice has three darted points at the ends like a peplum. I mean, I, that's one thing I wanted for Aurora and or Ariel, but they didn't do it with them. And they were like, let's just give it to us now. In the middle of her bodice, she has a metal gold brooch with a metal chain and a red gem in the middle. For the sleeves, the red parts on the puffy sleeves are just vinyl printed here in metallic foil. It has a gold trim on the arm and it goes really long. Uh, and I'm really happy that they retained this little um, metal gold brooch thingy on her sleeves because I thought they were going to get rid of that for the general version, but I love it so much. It's metal and it actually sculpted with a lot of S's. So for the actual material of the sleeves, this is a material that I love from the Disney store. And I was just talking about this with my friend Amy on Instagram a few weeks ago. To my knowledge, they started using this material with the 2012 line of classic and singing dolls. And I just love this material because it has that balance of softness, flowiness, uh, the translucency. And I really like that the fibers or the threads running through the fabric look like actual like magical lines running through or something. So I'm all for it. Also interesting that Disney usually gives them painted wedding bands for wedding dolls, but for her, she is wearing no ring. As of right now, she is still a single woman. Maybe she is still waiting for her prince to come down the aisle. <laughs> Finally, let's move on to her dress. So the material of this dress, I don't know what that is, but I love it. It has a nice um, shimmer and glitter in it without having actual glitter in it, if that makes sense. And then it also has a very nice weight and flowiness to it. You can really play around with it to make it look like it's mid movement or that way it kind of just drapes onto the floor. It's really pretty. So for the embroideries on her dress, it starts out as a line which goes down and then, you know, it kind of uh, explodes into a pattern. The middle panel has an elaborate pattern for the embroideries, even including a little apple in the middle, whereas the rest of the patterns are a like a simplified version of it. But I'm glad to say the embroideries and the gems do go all the way around, even on the back. I mean, for $150, they better. And here is another look at how the dress just drapes more towards the front. She actually has a, a little pencil skirt thing happening underneath as well, uh, which makes sense because the main layer is quite translucent. It could definitely help keep the dress in shape if it was bigger, but I'm not sure if this was a, a creative design choice to make it a little pencil skirt or whether it was a, a cost uh, affected reason. But the fabric is actually quite nice. And finally, we got her shoes. So it's a little pump heel with pink ribbons and they're actually nice sculpted holes on the heel. So maybe originally it was supposed to have ribbons going through it, I don't know. And I'm not sure if this is the first time they've ever used this sculpt. For me, it's the first doll that has these shoes, but correct me if I'm wrong. 
I also noticed the dress is actually not hemmed, but they stitched these scallop trims along the edges so that it looks like it's hemmed. Um, but you know, if this material is not a material that frays easily, then it shouldn't be a problem. So, to wrap up with my final thoughts, I do think this is a very beautiful and well-made doll. Uh, the price jump from $130 to $150 was quite controversial, but for me at least, uh, I'm quite happy with the money I paid with the, you know, with the product I got. But at the same time, if I had gotten the D23 version first, I don't think I would have bought this version. Not because it's not worth it, just because, you know, there is not enough reason to justify the differences to get both versions when you already have the superior one. I don't have any specific points to point out for improvements or suggestions on this doll aside from the ones that I uh, mentioned throughout the video. So I would still recommend this doll if you want her or if you're a fan of Snow White or if you're just not sure when you will be able to get the D23 version like me, um, this is a really nice, beautiful substitute to have for the time being. But if you're someone who doesn't need two Snow Whites of the same dress and just want the better version of her, I would say just wait it out for D23 version and go for it when you're able to. Alright, so that is it for my review on the Disney Store 85th Anniversary Limited Edition Snow White Doll General Version. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram at Creates for more toy photography. I've done a pretty nice shoot with her, so I hope you'll check me out there. And if you like dolls and Disney, I hope you'll consider subscribing here on my channel for more videos like this in the future. But right now, thanks so much for watching and I will see you all soon in my next video. Bye!